Well, happy May, Indianapolis Motor Speedway fans. It's finally here. You know, it's hard to believe. It, it was two years ago that we were getting ready for the 103rd running of the Indianapolis 500. We had that race, and then 2020 hit, and unfortunately, we didn't get to have an opportunity to have folks here in May of 2020. And while 2021 is going to be a little different than 2019, we're still excited that we get to host 135,000 of you here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway two years after you were here last time. But we're really looking forward to it. And we thought, what better way to kick off the month of May and that countdown to May 30th and the 105th running of the Indianapolis 500 presented by GameBridge than with the voice that makes the day special, uh, those moments right before the command for our drivers to start engines and start heading out on those warm-up laps to get ready for those 500 miles. The voice that uh, sings back home again in Indiana, the 90 seconds that everybody in the world when they're watching is a Hoosier. Uh, so happy to be joined by Jim Cornelius. And Jim, thank you for joining us. Can you believe that May and the Indy 500 is just around the corner? Oh man! First off, it's great to uh, it's great to be here, right on the cusp of uh, May one, and uh, and looking forward to this race. No, I can't believe it, and everything has been so crazy the last. Well, it feels like two years because it's been two five hundreds, you know. But uh, super excited to to be back there at the track, and that there's going to be one hundred and thirty five thousand fans. That's just fantastic. How many so sporting events can say we're just going to do a fraction of our fan base? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's still 135,000 people. So that that's pretty special. It, it, it is special. It's uh, still going to be a bit of a challenge because we know how important it is to have uh, those extra 150,000 or so folks that, that won't be here. But we do know that uh, in 2021 or 2022, we're really hoping to have most folks back. But, you know, I was going to back up a little bit. I mean, you are in the event business. You are in the people business. How challenging has last year been for you as well? Oh, well, if I were to uh, last March, well, wait, we're in, uh, we're at the end of April now. So let's say two Marches ago, right? When the NBA and the NHL canceled their seasons, everything else followed suit. So my personal economy is primarily a, a gig or event economy. And, uh, and I've done okay, Doug, but if I were to, uh, if I were to, look at my income from March to March, as opposed from, you know, the beginning of January to the end of December, that it's just unbelievable how much, you know, less than half of what I normally uh, would normally make. And, uh, and it's been, it's, I've been okay, you know, um, end of December, everybody has their tax time crunch, their, you know, retirement contributions they want to make. Well, didn't get to make those retirement contributions, had to pull a little money to pay off the taxes. But honestly, uh, everything's going to be all right. And I'm starting to get those phone calls now, you know, for July, August, September, October. And I, I just feel really optimistic. And, and I got to tell you, having the 500 come back for May, um, I'll be in town uh, the two weekends before with the Mika Motto Show uh, auctions too. So I actually have regular activity in May. It all feels so good. And, and, again having the fans last year we didn't have that and now this year it's back and that just feels like i don't know I, again it just makes me feel so optimistic about uh the way things are going you know we uh we talk an awful lot about how traditions are important at this indianapolis motor speedway and traditions are really what uh, make the event so special and we talk about the 105th running coming up and a lot of and and anniversaries of aj foyt's uh, first win and the you know the, the 60th anniversary of that we've got a 50th anniversary of an Allen senior win and a, and a 30th anniversary of of uh, Rick Mears win and, and we talk about those an awful lot but one of the things that's interesting about this year and we really haven't spoken much about is the fact that it's the 75th anniversary of the performing live as part of pre-race of back home again in Indiana before the race started James Melton did it back in 1946 Talk to me about how important it is for you. I know you love the fans, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but you also spent time studying our history and the people that had performed the song when we asked you to do it so that you could sort of pay tribute to them, but at the same time, it's got your own twist to it. 75 years of doing this song, does that put more pressure on you, or, or, or do you feel, is there an honor that goes along with being that person? Oh, there's tremendous honor. Uh, I think that the pressure I felt uh, was really the very first year 
and I spent so much time looking at video, going back and, you know, uh, seeing what I could find on YouTube, not only of performances of again in Indiana, I had to find hundred pounds what it meant and what the song, you know, what's there in the song. And mm -hmm. it's the, the melody is performed as a, as a jazz tune, you know, that goes back forever. And so it's done in like so many different kinds of ways. So when you look at all the possibilities and you know that you have to make choices, then you have to set your values. And, and tradition is very important. Anybody who, you know, you talk about James Melton. Well, I don't think I found a, uh, a YouTube video of James Melton singing it. <laughs> But that would have been really cool to see. Um, what I did find was, you know, so many of, of Jim Neighbors, and he, he was so loved, and that was somebody I knew uh, growing up as a kid. And so I watched and listened to those videos. I listened to the arrangement from the Purdue band. And, and I really, at one point, shifted my focus to the faces in the crowd, all the people. And you ask yourself, what are their expectations? Why do they love this song? Why do they love this man? And how can I step into that place and i'm not going to be a cover band i'm not going to be you know like a jim neighbors copycat or something right i'm not a frank sinatra knockoff or something like that you know what i'm trying to say uh, yes, sir. yes so but you still want to respect uh the tradition and it's been such an honor to be part of it and and in a funny way Doug, I got to tell you, last year with no fans there, mm -hmm. that creates an awareness you would never, it was spooky. Uh, it felt really uh, patriotic and, and powerful in a way just to have the race run in, in, mm -hmm. in that situation. It's something that everybody could attach to. It was normalcy. It was, uh, it, it was something to look forward to and be a part of and just take you away kind of from everything and the fact that we can still do it also creates optimism i think you know that we we still have our lives and our lives are going to come back to normal um anyway being part of uh the race being part of that great tradition am i so am i the third james i think we were there where you're at least the third right yeah <laughs> so that seems to be a seems to be a good fit for back home again right yeah i think it is i mean this is my pitch uh that uh uh, you know, <laughs> it's a great fit. <laughs> you you are a great fit for a lot of reasons that I don't think we even understood on the front end. When we were looking for somebody to come in and, and perform, we, we've said all along when Jim Neighbors left that, it, that it's not up to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to decide what the next tradition is. The song has always been the tradition. The fans are really what made Jim Neighbors the tradition. And, and when we had an opportunity to have you come in, we were excited about it. You have an Indiana connection with some of your education. You're, um, you understand sports. You understand how to really get a crowd excited through what you've done with the national anthem. All the things that, that work so well. But one of the things I think we didn't really understand about you, and maybe you didn't even understand about our fans, was going to be that just instant connection you were going to have with the fans and how they were going to connect with you. And it's not just those 90 seconds that you're performing. It's all year round. You've done such a great job of helping us connect with our fans, um, not just through the moment that you sing, but all year round. It's fun to watch your social media and how you have Indy 500 fans that are now connected to you and really have a great time interacting with you and how you are so personable and, and you connect back to them. When you came here and you knew you were going to sing the song, did you have any idea the response that you would get from the crowd and how that response would be maintained really 365 days a year with you? Right. Uh, no, I, I didn't. But I do know, you know, uh, social media is something that, you know, when neighbors started it didn't exist you know and and now we have it and so i uh, i think that first year i got back to my hotel room and i spent three hours going through my social media things responding to fans fell asleep woke up kind of looked at my phone again and i spent another hour and a half going through you know and, and that kind of went on into the next day where it just it kept coming and coming and and people have been just so cool, so warm. You know, they'll send me a video from somewhere on the backside of the track and, and you can hear the sound system kind of echo, echoing, you know, and they're singing along, you know, and uh, uh, it's, it's really a neat thing to feel that, that connection. And I like to think that spending that time looking at those faces uh, on those videos and saying, what is it that they love? What can I 
what what can I respect and honor and tap into that's already in place that's so wonderful? And then how can I just take it a little ways that that becomes sort of me? So I'm not just a, a copycat. And I like to think that people understand it's like using the Purdue band, right? I mean, sir, we changed the arrangement a little bit, but we we stay with this tradition and it's giving people what they know, but a little more. And to me, it all boils down to respect, respecting a tradition. And, and, I, and I do feel absolutely honored to, to be part of it. The other thing that, that I think has really helped us really fall in love with you is the fact that it, you don't come in on race morning and disappear 10 minutes after you, you perform. You have really embraced the entire weekend and you, you go to the parade, you're hanging out with our fans who are there on Legends Day when they're there. You and I get a moment and we have a beer on the Yard of Bricks uh, the night before the race. I mean, you're just, you are just a normal person. And you, and besides the fact that, that you, you bring us maybe the most important moment of race day, um, you are a fan the rest of the time. You are just one of the one of the hundreds of thousands of folks that comes in. And I think that's something else that's really helped our fan uh, appreciate you beyond the fact that we're giving you those 90 seconds that are so important to all of us and you deliver it so well. Well, hey, thanks. I grew up in Washington State, but with a, a Memorial Day weekend, my brother and I always got out the Hot Wheels, right? <laughs> we knew that the Indy 500 was on. And uh, so I grew up with those names, Mario Andretti and AJ Foyt and Al Unser, you know, and, and uh, um, so it has been like, like a kid in a candy shop in a way. And now, you know, I have a six and a half year old daughter and Doug, okay, I got to ask myself, I want to be a part of this little girl's life. But do I want to play Barbies or maybe just maybe I could get her to play Hot Wheels. And so we have Hot Wheels. We have IndyCar Hot Wheels. And we, we've even sat like uh, and, and looked at car, you know, the 10 biggest IndyCar car crashes for 2018 or whatever it was, you know, and and she was loving it. She was eating yeah. it up. And, and then I said to her, I said, you know what? I sing at this race. And she's like, what? You do? And then I showed her the video from YouTube. And it was just so much fun. I hesitate to call myself a fan the way, you know, indie fans. It goes back for generations. And you can, you can have all these different anniversaries that are coming up from, you know, Unser, Al Collins or senior wins or AJ Foyt wins or whoever it is all along, you know, the first time X driver and there's people who were there, you know, right. and they've been there going back when they were there with their dad or their grandpa. I mean, just so much that is unbelievable how, how much it's a part of people's family history. So I hesitate to put myself there, but I will say it is so, it's like I'm a kid in a candy shop. I mean, what's not to like? <laughs> <It's a blast. laughs> and, you know, uh, I appreciate the story about your daughter. That, that's awesome. And I know uh, what a, how much time you spend traveling to see her and how important that is for you. And I'm excited to know that uh, you're trying to make an Indy 500 fan out of her. So that's awesome. You know, oh, the, yeah. the thing that I <laughs> think is the most important about you, and I don't know that everyone knows this, but everyone should, and especially on Memorial Day weekend, you know, one of the best parts of the Indy 500 is how we celebrate men and women who serve and then ultimately the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice. And it really makes sense in what you do. You sing our national anthem all over the country um, and you're known for that. And then the fact that you're doing back home again in Indiana, though, you know how important Memorial Day is and you've got a foundation. And part of what you really are trying to do is help those men and women that serve. And I, I appreciate that. And that to me makes the idea that you're singing back home again in Indiana on Memorial Day weekend at a race that spends half its time leading up to the green flag, celebrating men and women who've served with the, uh, with the military march we've got. You really spend an awful lot of your time uh, interacting and trying to help those men and women who serve our country. Yeah, I, I started a, a, a charity called Live the Salute, which uh, you know, I wanted the opportunity as I do interviews at different sporting events, just to kind of come back around to, you know, our veterans and both my parents were World War II vets. Mom was a ar army nurse and dad was anti-aircraft artillery and singing the national anthem as much as I have and having the, uh, the men and women who serve on, on the ice with me at the hockey games, uh, I've developed some wonderful relationships, uh, 
One of them was with a, a general, Ray Johns, who's now retired, but he was ran Air Mobility Command down at Scott Air Force Base. And he nominated me as an honorary squadron commander for the Air Force bands down there. And that was so neat. I was able to MC Christmas concerts with them. I was able to help them get some interviews with media uh, in Chicago and to, and to get a concert venue where they opened up for the Lyric Opera of Chicago's uh, initial uh, concert each uh, season and because it was hard for them to get that exposure inside the city just trying to find ways to give back and then the veterans you know I'm out there on the ice with them I get invited to these events they they identify with the anthem and, and not to go down that rabbit hole too much Doug but you and I have talked about how back home again in Indiana is like an anthem for for the race and it, and it really is and to understand these songs it's it's not ideology you have to understand why they matter to people mm -hmm. and the associations people have with them so if it's a military person who heard this song as a buddy was brought off a chopper with a flag draped over the coffin or if it's a family that's gone to back home again in Indiana for generations and they sing that and there's excitement mm -hmm. and everybody comes together, you know, uh, yeah. it's yeah. not just a song, it's all the associations and stories and the time, the history, everything that's happening in people's lives around it. And that just builds something uh, really special. And, and that's, by the way, it's kind of the window or the porthole. I feel like I get to look through when I get to sing back home again in Indiana and I meet the fans, I get to see them and they get to see me in a way we would never see each other otherwise. And I, I just find that to be really, uh, really special. When they come and share something with me or we have a conversation, you know, that's a look that you're not going to get. I mean, I'm getting it because of that song, right? That's the reason why they're coming to me and, I, yep. and we're able to have that conversation. It's just, it's, it's, it's about people. Well, I, I appreciate all that you've done over the last few years with us. Uh, you have become part of the tradition, and it is it is a it's a joy to get to know you. It's a, get, a joy to get to watch you work the way you uh, interact with fans. The time you take, you do have those conversations. You're not one of those folks that just walks on by, and I and I and I truly appreciate that, and I know our fans do too. And as we're sitting you know, here, uh, you know, inside yeah. 30 days of the Indy 500. We just felt like it was really important to get a moment to say hello, get people fired up for race day and for what for me and for many of the folks that sit in the grandstands, the most important time of the year, those few seconds when back home again in Indiana is performed on the front stretch uh, now by your voice. You've been such a great caretaker with it. Um, I can't wait to just continue to partner with you. I can't wait to hear your voice with people in the, in the grandstand so you don't think it's spooky this year. And we get to, uh, see who's going to be in victory lane. And then we get to start that countdown all over again for 2022. And we'll have more folks here, but, but Jim, th seriously, thank you so much on behalf of everybody, all our fans. Uh, you've become a treasure. Uh, you are an honorary Hoosier and we appreciate that. More importantly, you're an amazing American and we love to, uh, uh, we love to be partnered with you. Yeah, no, I love it, Doug. Thank you so much. You know, it's funny you're saying that I, uh, how I, have time for the fans or whatever, but I feel like I must bow to the master. I think, I think that, you know, a little bit, it's like a uh, you know, grasshopper when you can take the pebble from my hand and you too will be worthy because I've been with you around the fans and you're unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's a, uh, it's pretty neat to see. Well, I think the one thing you and I both know, we don't get to do what we love without our fans and without people that care about the sports that we care about. So if people aren't showing up for a Blackhawk game or showing up for an Indy 500, you and I are, uh, yeah. Maybe working at Starbucks or something. So uh, yeah. it's it's definitely the reason we get to do what we get to do. Well, race yeah. fans, there you have it. Uh, the voice that we can't all wait to see, uh, that we can't wait to hear and see at the Indy 500 here in just a few weeks. We are really excited to get things kicked off, get the month of May started with the GMR Grand Prix, and then ultimately that 105th running of the Indianapolis 500 that you know is just about to start when you get to hear Jim sing back home again in Indiana. So thanks everybody for being here. This is one of our Behind the Bricks series. This is a special edition. So we've got no other guests on this one. No better guest to have for an entire show uh, than Jim. So Jim, thanks a lot. We will see you in a few days trackside. Thank you, Doug. Looking forward to it. Take care, man.